Hi, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe. Today we're here to talk about the Dremel Idea Builder 3D45 desktop 3D printer. This is the latest in the Dremel line of printers, which is a Bosch brand, and I've been really pleased with it. Through our testing, it's done very well. It's a very capable machine. It has a heated bed, a fully enclosed build chamber, so you can print with a variety of materials. It's network enabled. It's got a really nice cloud-based printing solution, which I'll show you. And uh, overall, for the price, it's a great value, so we've been very pleased with it. So today we'll be taking a look at the printer hardware itself, as well as the cloud-based printing solution, which is included as part of the printer purchase. So let's take a look at the hardware first. Okay, so this is the Dremel 3D45. And uh, the first thing I noticed in unpacking it is uh, how very well built it is. Uh, everything feels very solid. It's a fully enclosed printer, so you've got a nice uh, lid on top, which just uh, has a very solid feel to it. The hinges are nice and tight so that it uh, doesn't uh, slam shut on you. It's got a nice front door as well. So it's a fully enclosed environment, which makes it nice for printing materials like ABS or nylon that need a little bit more temperature control. Uh, as you can see, it uses a glass build plate, and they give you some glue stick with the printer, so you can put a little glue stick on the glass to help uh, your prints adhere, and that works well. It has a really nice 5-inch full-color touchscreen on the front, which is how you control the printer. You can get to everything you need there, from leveling to changing filament to other tools that you might need access to. And you can also control most of that through the cloud-based software, which I'll show you in a little while. The filament mounts on the uh, inside left of the printer, as you can see over there. So you access that through a side panel here. Turn the printer, you can see this. So there's a, a door that you can take off and the spool mounts on the inside there. And the Dremel materials are uh, RFID enabled, so the printer will automatically detect the type of filament that you load into it, and it will automatically configure the appropriate temperature settings for that material. So that makes it really nice and easy to use. The material uh, feeds up through that uh, little tube there in the back and loads into the extruder. It is a direct drive extruder, so it has nice filament handling. And uh, the initial setup was really easy. It basically takes you through an assisted leveling process. There's a, a little sensor that drops down from the extruder to detect the height of the bed. And it will tell you if you need to adjust any of the knobs and which direction to turn it. And the adjustment knobs themselves are actually really easy to use because they're these nice, large uh, plastic knobs that you can see down there. And that makes the adjustment really easy. So all you have to do is run the leveling procedure and then let it auto-detect the height. And if it tells you to turn the knob in one direction or the other, you give it a turn, and it will then recheck it to make sure that the height is calibrated properly. So it makes for a really easy leveling process. And uh, that's really about all there is to it to get started with your first print job. You just slide the build plate in, load your material, run the leveling, and uh, you're ready to go. The uh, printer works really well. It's a very quiet machine, especially because it's enclosed. When I close the doors here, you can, you can see it's, uh, it, it's pretty quiet, even though it's turned on now. And I'm not printing at the moment, but even when it's printing, it really doesn't make much noise at all. So this would be really nice in a, a classroom or an office environment where noise might be an issue otherwise. Now, the printer actually includes a carbon filter, which uh, you can see in the fan back there. So it actually does active filtering to uh, filter out any potentially harmful, uh, what are called VOCs, or volatile organic compounds, if you might be printing with ABS or, or materials like that that might otherwise be a, a bit of a concern. So there's some filtering built in, which is nice, because otherwise you can spend a lot of money getting enclosures that uh, do that filtering for you. There's a uh, little flash drive port on the front, and they give you a USB flash drive with the printer. And then on the side of the printer, we have the USB connection and an Ethernet port, as well as our power switch. The power cable itself plugs in on the back. The printer also has Wi-Fi in addition to wired networking connectivity, so you can connect it easily to any network and then access it through the Dremel Cloud Print software, which I'll show you next. So that's a quick overview of the hardware for you. Well, let's take a look at the software side and I'll show you what you can do to get a job ready for this printer. So here we have the Dremel Print Cloud solution. This is powered by 3D Printer OS, as you can see. We're looking at the printers page here. So it's showing my Dremel 3D45 there. It shows the status as idle. You'll notice that it shows how much filament is remaining. I just put a new spool in, so I've got 500 grams there, and it will track the filament usage for you so you can see when you're getting low. 
The printer also has automatic filament detection, so there's actually a sensor in the extruder that'll detect when the filament runs out, and it'll pause the print job automatically for you so you can load a new spool. So that's a really nice feature that uh, will make sure that you don't have failed prints because a filament spool ran out. Over here it shows the current temperature of the extruder and the heated bed, and down here it would show the status of print jobs. I don't have one running at the moment, but you'll see that shortly when I start a job. You also have a live view button, which will take you to the camera view. There's an HD camera mounted inside the printer. So this gives you a nice view of the print job as it's in progress, uh, but you'll also notice that because of the position of the camera, it gives you a view of the filament spool inside the printer. So in addition to the filament tracking capabilities that the printer offers, you have a visual way of monitoring your filament status as well. You can also use this interface to share your printer, so you can actually share it with somebody by email address and you can let them print or queue up jobs. You can specify a quantity of jobs that they can uh, use the printer for. So uh, you'll notice throughout this interface the whole thing is designed for multi-user uh, capabilities, which makes it really nice for environments like a school or an office where you have a number of different users uh, and you want to be able to centrally manage one or more printers. Uh, I only have one printer set up on the network right now, but if I had multiple printers running, they'd all be accessible uh, through the same interface and they can all be managed centrally. If I go over to the My Files page here, I can upload STL files, which I might want to print. You can upload as many files as you need to. So I've already uploaded a few test files here and we'll use those for the demonstration. Over here you'll notice that you have the ability to repair your STL files right here within the cloud. So if you think there might be some issues with the uh, STL files geometry, there's a, an easy repair function built in. You then have the ability to lay out your print job on the build plate and then slice your job and get it ready for printing. So I'll show you that here. We'll go ahead and uh, lay out a print job. And in this case, I want to do two STL files. I'm going to do this bolt as well as the accompanying nut. And so I'm just going to click on the layout for the bolt object. And it takes me to the layout view, shows the uh, bolt on the plate there. But then I can click on add file here and I can then select the nut as well. You can add as many objects as you need to to the build plate. And when I click apply, it'll add that object. I can then reposition that so that they're not overlapping each other. You can scale your objects up or down. You can rotate them. You can do anything you need to and uh, get them ready and positioned the way you want to. You can drop your objects to the bed. You can center them and uh, otherwise get them positioned the way that you want to. Once you have it positioned the way you want, you can save and queue the job, or you can just save and slice it. So I'm going to go ahead and do save and slice. And that takes me over to the projects page, and it takes you right into the slicing view. So all you have to do here is select your printer. In this case, I'm using the 3D45. You can select your printing profile. Uh, it defaults to uh, this experimental uh, PLA, which is a 100 micron layer height two perimeters or two shells, if you will, with a 10% infill density. Uh, they also have some other profiles like a draft PLA, which would be a 0.3 millimeter layer height uh, with one shell. There's a standard PLA, which is 0.2 millimeter layer height and uh, two shells, 50% infill. There's a best option, which is 100 microns, three perimeter shells, and 80% infill density. But then all of that is easily customizable with the sliders here. So they give you some starting points, but you can then go ahead and set it up any way you want. So I'll, uh, I'll do a 100 micron print here, which is a pretty good quality. Now this printer is capable of a 50 micron layer height, uh, but currently their cloud-based solution limits you to 100 microns. Uh, they are working on uh, addressing that so that you'll be able to go to a 50 micron layer height, but uh, if you do need to go to that layer height, you can do that through the desktop slicing software, which they also provide with the printer. I'm going to do, uh, let's see, uh, I'm going to do two shells, and uh, I'll take it down to about 60% infill. You can choose whether or not you want to raft. Uh, I've never found the need to use it, so I'm going to leave that turned off. You can enable or disable supports. Uh, that won't be needed for the objects I'm printing here, so I'll turn that off. And you have the uh, option of recentering the object before slicing, which I don't want to do. I want to leave them positioned as I have them set up. You have the advanced mode here as well. If you really want to get into customizing your settings, you can get into all that here. You can customize your material flow. You can customize the uh, skirt settings or brim if you prefer that. You can customize temperature settings, fan speeds. 
uh, quality related settings down here, for example, top and bottom thickness, uh, the bottom layer speed, the overall print speed, travel speed, retraction distance, they give you a lot of options that you can control here. And then if you go over to the expert mode, you can actually go into the JSON file itself, and here you can really uh, customize any of the settings that you might want to, even the ones that aren't shown in the interface. But uh, generally speaking, I found the simple mode to be uh, very adequate for most print jobs, so that makes it nice and easy to get a job sliced and ready for the printer. So I'll go ahead and click now on Slice and Toolpath Preview. That'll slice the job and then give me a preview. And the thing you'll notice here as it's slicing now, shows in progress, is that because this is being sliced in the cloud, it's very quick. It's already done with the slicing in this case. So now it's loading my preview and it's giving me a layer by layer preview. So over here with the slider, I can actually scroll through the layers. I can zoom in on my print job and you can actually get a preview of how the infill is going to be laid out and make sure that the first layer looks good as it uh, starts each of these objects. And then you can preview the, that print job all the way up. and Everything looks good here. So uh, having checked that preview and make sure everything uh, looks like it's in order, we can then go ahead and uh, send the job to the printer. So I'm going to close this preview and uh, now I'm ready to build. So now I have the option to just go ahead and print it immediately, or I can queue it up. If there's a, maybe a printer that already is printing something, you can queue it. And then once the printer finishes the current print job, it'll prompt you right on the touch screen to say, hey, do you want to go ahead and print the next job in the queue? And uh, you can print a number of jobs in succession that way. I'm going to go ahead and select print in this case. And it takes you right to the live feed of the printer, and it shows you the detailed status of what's happening. It shows that the printer status has changed from idle to downloading, so it's downloading our job to the printer now. Now it says that it's changed from downloading to heating, so it's now heating up the build plate and heating up the extruder, and then it'll go ahead and get started with the print. It shows an approximation of the time left, in this case 3 hours 55 minutes. And you can now see that it's getting the build plate uh, raised up over there. Gives you a, a preview of what's happening. And when you're tired of watching the uh, live feed here, you can just click on continue in the background and it'll continue along its merry way in the background. You can monitor that from the printers page. So if I go over to printers, you'll now see that print job is in progress. It shows the estimated print time and it'll show the print time remaining as it gets started. You can click on details to go back to the detailed feed screen and, and see the status details of what's happening. And you can pause the print job, you can cancel a print job, and then you can also go to the associated project. The other pages here are uh, models, which takes you to a page where you can view lesson plans. So if you're a teacher, there's some great materials here uh, arranged by uh, uh, class uh, level, grade level. So they have courses for elementary schoolers, middle schoolers, and high schoolers. They don't currently have anything under higher education or institutions, but perhaps they'll add materials there later. Then they also have a support page where you can get direct access to Dremel DigiLab support in a number of different methods. You can call them, you can Skype, you can use online chat, or you can get community support. So you have uh, immediate access to a number of support options here. And then they have a dashboard. And the dashboard is where you can see all your historical print jobs for any given printer on your network. So you can see how your print job's been going. This is especially useful if you have a number of different users that are using your printers. Uh, for example, you might see that one particular user tried to print the same job, you know, 10 times and it keeps failing and you could then intervene and uh, ask that user if they need some help so they stop wasting filament. You can see your print jobs that uh, have successfully completed. You can see the one that's in progress up there at the top. You can see some summary statistics at the top as far as the total number of hours and minutes that uh, the printer has been used, the number of prints, how many are printing right now, how many you have in the queue, uh, any errors that you might have encountered, and the total amount of filament that's been used. And the platform also records time lapses for you. So if you click this icon over here on the left for any given print job, it'll let you download a video file, which you can then watch and see a time lapse of your entire print job. You also have access to global statistics, if that's of interest. You can see throughout the Dremel community how many printing hours, number of prints, material that's been used, and you can see how that changes over time, if that's of interest. 
So overall, I found this cloud-based interface to be really nice to use, uh, especially if you have multiple printers and are managing multiple users for those printers. It provides a great way to manage all that centrally and keep an eye on what's happening across all of those printers. This also is uh, mobile friendly, so you can pull this site up on your uh, mobile phone no matter where you are, and you can get to the live view and see your print job as it's happening, even from your phone, which is really nice if you're out and about and want to just keep an eye on your prints to make sure that uh, they're not running into any issues. Okay, so now our print's done. Go ahead and take these out. So, surface finish looks good, real nice quality. And the fit's really nice too. It's nice and snug, but it moves smoothly, so that shows that the printer's tolerances are right where they should be. So, it's a real nice print. The Dremel 3D45 comes with everything you need to get started. They give you a spool of the Dremel nylon in black, as well as a spool of the Dremel Eco ABS in black. Of course, you can also use the PLA that Dremel offers, and they're going to be releasing a PET-G filament soon. So because of the heated bed uh, and the filtering built into the unit and the enclosed workspace, you've got a lot of options in terms of materials that you can use. Printer also comes with some glue sticks, the USB cable, the flash drive, print removal tool, uh, the manuals, and power cables. So everything you need to get started. So that's our review of the Dremel 3D45. I hope it's been useful for you. Thanks for watching.